Okay, so let's talk about layer masks. Uh, layer masks are a non-destructive way to work in Photoshop. They're great if you're working on a project that requires regular changes, for example. It means you don't have to start your Photoshop work again from scratch um, because you can just adjust the mask instead. Um, layer masks are the best way to work with layers, in my opinion. Um, the best way to explain how they work is just to show you, so we'll jump straight in and get started. So here we have the floor plan that I've been working on. Um, in this file you may see that I've been using quite a lot of layer masks. These, these um, layers here that have a little link icon and an additional thumbnail image are layer masks. Um, I do use them quite a lot. You can see in pretty much every group there's going to be a layer mask of some sort in there. Um, but for now let's just keep it simple. Let's get rid of some of these and take a look at how you would set up a layer mask for these roofs. So instead of just colouring in the roofs I use the texture just to give it a little bit more depth and feel. Um, so I'm going to turn off these textures that I've put onto this roof and we're going to start from scratch. So here we've got a layer which is a texture and what we're going to want to do is make a mask um, for these three roof pieces um, to go over the texture. So what we could do is just get our delete um, our eraser and get rid of the stuff that we're not going to need. We just change this select a simple eraser brush. So we could literally start sort of going like this. But the problem is if you've started deleting all of this here and then later on something changes or you want to adjust it, you've lost this texture for good. So this texture is only good for what you have left which is this. So it just creates a bit of a problem whereas using a layer mask you don't lose any of that information that's not currently being seen. So if I just bring my history tool back up, go back to here. Okay. So there are a few ways you can work with layer masks. Um, I'll jump right in and show you the first way that I think works quite well. So I'm going to turn this texture off for a second. I'm just going to click on that eyeball there and I'm going to use the wand tool to select the area that I want the texture to show up in. I'm then going to hold down shift and add this area and once again hold down shift and add this area. So you can see I've got these selections, three selections of the three different flat roofs all ready to go. I've got my layer selected and all I'm going to do now is come down here hover over this here which says add layer mask, click on that and the layer mask has now been added. I can now turn that back on and we can see the layer has revealed the texture in the areas that I selected but it's hidden the texture from all the other areas. So if I just disable that layer mask for a second what I've done there is right clicked on the mask itself. You can see we have the whole texture back. So I'm going to enable that again. So let's explain how these masks work. So we can see here that this little thumbnail is showing the black areas are the areas that aren't showing up the texture and the white areas are the um, where the texture is being revealed. So we can basically paint onto the layer mask to reveal or conceal the texture that we're wanting to show. So black will mask the layer below and white will reveal it. So let me just show you that. I'm going to select the brush tool. I've got white selected. So if I just start running the brush around here you can see it's revealing more of the layer below. Likewise if I press X to switch between these two foreground and background colors, I've now got black selected. I can now start to remove the texture away again. Now it's important to note when you're doing this you must have this part the mask of the layer selected not the layer itself so if I started doing that on here you can see I would make a mess of the the original image so I'll take that away so I'm just gonna delete this layer mask if we didn't do it with a selection and we literally put our layer over the top of the roofs where we want it to be and then we click layer mask, you'll see that the mask is white which means everything has been revealed and we would then have to select and 
adapt the mask accordingly. So the alternative to this, if I just remove that layer mask again, I've got my layer selected. Instead of just clicking add new layer mask, I'm going to hold down alt or option and click and you'll see that then fills that mask with black which means it conceals the layer. You can then more easily bring that texture back in using a similar method to what I used before. So we could go one tool, select the area that we want and then we could use a fill option. So let's just talk about how you could do a quick fill. If we want to fill this area with the foreground colour, let me just change this foreground colour to white. If we wanted to fill that with the foreground colour, we could press Alt and Backspace, Alt or Option, Backspace, and you can see that has now filled that with white, which has revealed the texture. So we'll do that again, Alt or Option, Backspace which is filling with the foreground colour. I'm going to show you another couple of tricks that you can um, use with layer masks. So let's have a look at the sky here and let's imagine that we don't want the existing sky that we've put in here, which is this. We're going to do a new one. So I have a texture that I've downloaded, which I'm going to drag directly into the elevation drawing. You can see it's quite large, so I'm just going to resize that. I'm going to resize it so that it covers that whole area. Okay, just going to zoom out a touch so I can get that right. For the purpose of this example, I'm probably just going to stretch it a little bit so it might look a bit strange, but I don't think it really matters in this Okay, so there we go. So we want to demonstrate this sky as an alternative to the sky that we had before. So we're going to add a layer mask. So I'm just going to switch that sky off for a second and I'm going to press the one tool to select all of this sky area. You can see it's really nice and conveniently selected the sky. I'm now going to turn the uh, sky layer back on that I've just brought in. Just going to rename that and I'm going to add layer mask. Okay, so that's fine, um, but as you can see, it's it's not really working brilliantly because the, the sky is going all the way down to the ground um, and you've got clouds at ground level and it just doesn't really look right. So if I just undo that and instead I'm going to, I'm going to add my layer mask but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Command or Control and click on that mask. So I've I've reselected that area. Then what I'm going to do is instead of just using one solid color, I'm going to use a gradient. So I'm going to come up here to the left hand toolbar. I'm going to hold down on the Fill tool to give myself more options. And this one here is the gradient tool. So the standard that is selected at the moment is black to white. I'm happy with that. That's what we want. I'm going to make sure I've got the gradient, um, sorry, the layer mask selected. And I'm going to drag the gradient from the ground up. And now you can see what that's done is that's put a black at the bottom, which is the conceal, and white at the very top, which is reveal. So that's helped but I'm not entirely happy with that so let's try it again. So instead of clicking from the ground I'm going to click from about up here so I want no sky to be showing from here to about here and then I'm going to want a gradual texture as we go up. So I'll click here I'm going to hold shift just so that I get a nice straight line and I'm going to let go maybe about here. And You can see that's lifted it a little bit. So this is quite useful for having masks where you want a gradual reveal and conceal, as it were. Um, I use these gradients quite a lot for things like skies, um, and it does tend to work really well. Another thing you can do, of course, is not use black or white, but use gray, so you get a bit of reveal, but you've not got the full solid texture. So I'm gonna show you one last thing that's pretty cool with these layer masks. Um, let's imagine that you wanted to experiment with some different cladding options on this. Um, I've brought in two textures that we could try out. One is a black timber cladding, 
to replace the other timber cladding that we've got there. And the other thing that we could look at is adding a different stone texture to this element here. Now instead of starting again with your layer mask from scratch, what you can do is just copy a layer mask from one layer to another, which is brilliant. So you can see here I've got my um, new cladding option and it's sitting. the layer is sitting above the existing timber cladding. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Alt or Option and I'm going to click and drag the mask on the existing timber cladding layer and drag it onto the new cladding layer. And it's as simple as that. I'm going to do the same again with the stone cladding. So I'm going to hold Alt or Option, click and drag the mask and put it onto the new cladding. So quite quickly you can experiment with different styles, different textures, without being destructive in your drawing in any way and it's super fast as well.